Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, boys and girls, welcome to the next episode of the Property Management Show. I'm your host, Alex Osanenko. I do manage, uh, I'm a founder and CEO of a company called Four and Half. We do marketing for property management companies. Um, but really, my passion is to do a lot of uh, future scaping and um, sort of tracking where this industry is going. And it's been very, very exciting the last few years. A lot of things are coming to a head. And you know, I wanted to invite guests that run big businesses. Specifically, the reason for that is I think we in a smaller business realm sort of see uh, what we see, but we're really usually busy um, doing the work we need to do to survive and thrive, right? Well, the big businesses have a little bit higher, I'd say, uh, viewpoint of where things are. And I'd lo I love learning from these guys. Um, um, to kind of figure out the direction of the industry and, and, and it helps me personally position uh, my strategic planning uh, for the future. And you, my dear listener, will uh, absolutely enjoy today's interview because my today's guest um, ran marketing and customer service departments for a tiny company called Constant Contact. They have recently sold for a tiny sum of a billion dollars. One billion dollars, okay? And Chris, Chris Lister, who is my guest right now, um, is, is the guy that sort of was, was there growing that company uh, for a number of years. I think it's over a decade, right, Chris? It is, yeah. 10 yeah. years to the day, actually. Quite exciting. But the, 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 beautiful, the beautiful thing about Chris's experience and how I connect to it, I mean, Constant Contact work, works with a lot of small businesses. So that's sort of like that big business experience, knowing what makes small businesses tick. And now he's running a company called Buildium, which is also big. So Chris, um, maybe tell us a little bit about you and the company you're running today and we'll dig into the uh, futurescaping you and I. Yeah, sure. Well, Alex, first of all, thanks for having me. Uh, it's great to see you. Love the, 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 the thing behind you, the flow chart behind you, dig it. So thanks uh, for, for keeping that up there. It's awesome. Um, but no, it's great to be here. So a little bit about me. Uh, you're right. Uh, for the last, uh, let's say, 10 years, starting in 2006, um, I was a part of the, the team at Constant Contact that uh, grew that business from something, I think I started, it was $25 million, And then when we sold it, uh, it had a revenue run rate of uh, $450 million. Uh, And uh, at that time, I was the chief revenue officer. I've been in tech for too long, <laughs> meaning I'm old. <laughs> uh, and um, so then after Constant Contact, I, I had to spend some time or I wanted to spend some time uh, with my wife and kids and get to know them again after uh, helping grow Constant Contact. Uh, and then after just about a year, I joined Buildium uh, as the chief customer officer, uh, which was great because it allows me to keep on going with the small business audience, which I love. Uh, and I respect and I just I just it just gets me going every day to be working with them uh, Buildium is a property management platform uh, For again small business type property managers who are managing upwards of between you know 10 to 5,000 units mm. uh, You know and we offer the platform that helps with property management accounting and then also the general property management aspects of while you're following and understanding your properties, your, your leases, your tenants, um, and your units. Uh, we have 16,000 customers. We've been around for actually uh, 14 years or so. Um, and so I started as a chief customer officer where I was responsible for sales, marketing, customer support, and customer uh, success. And then over the past, uh, just last six months, I've transitioned into the CEO. Um, transition from Mike Montero, who I know, I know, you know, is this uh, your, Chris, is this your first uh, CEO gig? This is my first CEO gig. Yes. Tell, tell, okay. Tell us a little bit about uh, like, this is, I'm very interested. So I, I've sort of built four and a half over time to initially be a high growth company. Now we sort of, we're, we're growing, but it's predictable. Now we've organized operations, we implement an EOS. So systems are running like I'm beginning to think outside of the box. Like, what is it like to run a big business? Uh, it is awesome. <laughs> okay. 
okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. so, you know, it's great. The thing that's awesome about it is because, uh, you know, frankly, you know, Michael and Dimitri, the, the founders, over the years set us up from an incredible culture perspective, from an incredible understanding of our market perspective. And so what I say to the team now in the business, in the company now is, hey, look, we know we have a market to go after, right? We're not a company. There are many companies out there that are, are frankly trying to find if they even have a market to go after. Um, and we have a product that is very good going to great. Uh, and it's, you know, throwing a ton of value to our customers every single day, every day. You know, it helps our customers get closer to their goal of whatever their ultimate success is. Uh, and then we now have the team uh, in place here at Buildium that will help us get to our next level. And we can talk about what that is uh, now or a little bit later if you want. So what, ha what does that mean? It means that it's all about the team executing. And so helping the team get aligned uh, and helping our leaders understand the opportunity, which is huge that we have in front of us, uh, is something that I just love doing every single day. Um, All right. So, so let's, let's dig in, Chris, let's dig in and understand, like, let's, <laughs> let's go from a perspective of our customer, right? From a perspective of our customer, your customer and my customer can be the same. Like we, in fact, right. we probably share a number of customers. I don't have 16,000, um, but, <laughs> but I got, we are, we have enough to know, um, what the pain points are and the specifically like, the, like, let's call the, the, since we're calling this episode, future scaping, let's big yeah. picture there's still more than half of individual landlords who manage their own rental properties. Yep. Why do you think that is? So uh, I think generally because property management uh, more often than not is something that happens to people almost accidentally. Um, so they will, in the beginning anyway, they may have a property that uh, is given to them as a result of a parent passing on. Or if they're in the military, they're moved to different areas throughout the country and therefore have a have a property in different areas. Um, so we call those the quote unquote accidental landlords. And we know from our information and from our research that that's about a third of the market. So you're right. There's a lot of people that have just kind of fallen into this um, at the beginning. Uh, and so therefore they're just trying to get a, their feet under the ground and understand what's happening. The interesting thing is those people or a fair amount of those people say, hey, I kind of dig this, and so now I'm going to buy another property, or I'm going to continue to grow and grow. And, and once you get upwards, I would say, of like 10 or maybe 20, depending on the type of property, um, you then need to start to think about you know, efficiencies, gaining efficiencies, how am I going to grow, et cetera. And that's really what technology comes in. And we have definitely seen over, frankly, even just the course of the two plus years that I've been here at Buildium, that willingness of uh, picking up technology now and replacing, frankly, the three ring binder that I know we all know that property managers have loved historically. Um, that willingness to pick up that new technology is actually just starting to really like catch the wave. Um, and we're really excited about that. And, and frankly, the property management is ripe for a disrupt to being disrupted. Speaking uh, of disruption, so, sorry, I, I, I'm, I want I know I'm breaking your thought, but I have to, I have to put this in, in because, because <laughs> speaking of disruption, do you feel, so there are venture backed property management companies financed by tier one Valley VC shops yeah. right, that are answering this space in dozens, right? There's not one, there's not six, there's probably 15 right now, over a dozen, I should say, or more and more are coming because property tech is hot right now. This is where every VC now is looking at. Do you think, do you think from your particular position, do you feel there's a chance for any of these VC-backed startups to become unicorns in the space, yeah. kind of like Uber Lyft mindset for property management space? Yeah, so, uh, so you are 100% right to jump on the word disruption and with property tech um, because it is, it is ripe. And so we shouldn't be surprised that there are a number of uh, VCs and, and more money coming into the space. Why? Because it is a space that has not adopted technology very quickly. And that is actually, just from my experience of having uh, spent some time actually with the VC, uh, that's one of the areas that they look for, right? So where can we introduce technology to help with efficiency and growth? Now, will they, with that type of model, will that end up being a unicorn? I think it all depends, frankly, on can you ultimately get to a repeatable model um, that you're throwing a ton of value to, to your customer, 
that you have those relationships with customers. Because remember, you're, you're dealing with, in this space, you're dealing with SMBs, so you have to be empathetic and genuine and really understand their mindset. Uh, and you're dealing from a resident and from your, your vendors and your owner's perspective. Uh, those are relationship-based type of things. And so if they come in and genuinely go after that, like other vendors and like BuildDM and like you in the space, understand that relationship is key, they probably have a shot. But that the companies that are going to win aren't necessarily those folks that just have a ton of money behind them. Um, it's really those folks in this space that understand, again, that this is an empathetic, relationship-driven, ripe for technology. You have to be there for the long haul. You have to know that, show that your customers, under, that you understand your customers and what they're going through every single day. Um, if they're not going to be genuine and all they have is a fat check, they won't be successful. That is such a sage advice. I've seen, I've seen companies deploy multiple tactics, right? I, I see some of them just basically just uh, steamroll, right? Everything else is crap. We are by far the best because we have this app and this thing and this thing. And they're just steamroll through that. And, and um, the others are a lot more, like as you said, a lot more focused on customer experience. But still, a lot of them will get it wrong because – they're still testing, right? They're iterating. And so, you know, you look at the, you know, their reviews, Yelp ratings and Google ratings, you know, those are in the dumpster. Um, right. yeah. <laughs> all of yeah. them pretty much, all of them. And uh, Castle even went out of business, um, you know, sort of they probably could, just couldn't raise enough money to keep going. But so that's an interesting space to be in. Are you watching it closely, Chris? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, uh, this is, uh, you know, it's interesting because as you said before, I was in constant contact and constant contact was a horizontal play, right? So we service literally hundreds of, of, of uh, verticals, if you will, in the, in the SMB space. Um, now we get to, fo I get to focus so deep on just one vertical of property management, which has so many different facets. Mm -hmm. You know, this is, you think, oh, well, you have, you have a piece of property and, and I just got to collect rent. But we know that property management is, has upwards of you know, 12 to 15, maybe 18 pieces in that whole process. Um, and again, a lot of them are ripe for technology disruption. A lot of them are ripe for people really just taking a hold of the technology and understanding it to give them time, frankly, so that they can build on what's really important in this, in this space, which is the relationships. The re I can't I can't just you know, repeat enough how important relationships are, even at small scale, large scale, what have you, you have to figure out ultimately, how are you going to differentiate yourself based on those relationships? I, I, I hear you 100%. This is kind of why, um, this, this is not, this, I love your passion behind customer experience, right? And I have a few questions baked in for that to help. Because that's a, I think that's a big topic now. So the PM Grow Summit, the conference I run, I think, uh, um, uh, on an annual basis, um, yep. we, we're, to this, the first year theme was, you know, about sales and marketing. The second year was more about, hey, how do you actually, you know, make yourself profitable? Um, and then the third year now, it's all about customer experience, right? It's all oh, about awesome. that lane. Um, but um, so to, to dive into the customer experience part of, part of things, you have extensive background in this, right, Chris? This is your, this is your passion. It is one of my passions, yes. <laughs> so you, build, you build customer service organizations within organizations. Yeah, well, uh, what, I bit, what I think we all are trying to build here is really a customer service or customer success company, right? So it's not just one, it's not one department, right? Um, the, the idea here is customer success, customer support, customer service is the responsibility for us, is the responsibility of every single Buildium that is here at Buildium to ensure that we are meeting the expectations that our customers have, have put in us, right? that empathetic reality of they, our customers can walk at any minute. We don't have contracts. And so, you know, month to month, they can say, see you later. And so it's important on us every single day to renew that commitment of making sure that our customers understand how they can be successful. How can they work with us? What do they need to do? Um, you know, again, it's not just a department. It's an entire, it's part of our culture. It's an, it's the entire organization. And that's not just frankly, Corporate BS. We live into that every single day. Yeah, I, I hear you. What would you so so on the big business side or maybe medium sized business? It's like I have a staff. We have a staff of what twenty four people plus another six, so thirty people or so. 
um, we can we can start sculpting customer experience because we have the the staff. How about a business of ten people? Like, what would you recommend somebody with 10, 12 staff? How, how, what's the kind of what? How would they penetrate into this customer experience realm? What's the first thing you would do? What's the lowest and the biggest uh, outcome? Lowest thing to you know, easiest thing to do. So, if you're ten people. I would say that every single person in that organization should have at some point the responsibility each month or every other month to go out and sit with and meet face to face with customers. Not, not call them on the phone, not text them, not slack them, not whatever you want to go into their life. You want to see what they deal with every single day. I'll give you an example. Uh, to right about six months after I started here, a bunch of us uh, from here went down to Philadelphia um, and met with upwards, I think we had eight, eight to 10 customer visits. Um, first, uh, the first visit of the second day was with a customer. We'd planned it, we had everything, agenda, all that stuff set up, it was gonna be great. We go into the office, we noticed the guy is pretty agitated and we said, you know, hey, is this still a good time? You know, what's happening? Well, it turns out that he got a call at 4 a.m. in the morning that, frankly, a sewer pipe, <laughs> lack of a better way of saying it, uh, blew up that day or that morning, and the units in the first floor of one of his properties are fully flooded with sewage. Oh. So, you know, so this guy had a plan set up. He's going to meet with us and all that. But... That plan, that kind of checklist, that all of his, what he was gonna do that day went out the window at 4 a.m. This is an occurrence that happens all the time, but, and we knew of it, right? But to live it, to see how, that, how he was reacting, to see how the, his uh, employees were reacting, to see how he was keeping calm with his resident or dealing with the, it was, it was something that you, you can't get without being you know, in situation with the, with the customer. Um, and, you know, other than travel costs, uh, you know, I'm sure you probably have some local customers. I would, I just think really understanding and getting into that mindset by living with that customer and seeing how your customers work. I think that's really important. And frankly, it ends up that, you know, a lot of things from a technology perspective and from a process perspective are starting to become kind of table stakes, right? They're, they're things that a lot of people, once they start to adopt the technology, a lot of people, um, it's not really a differentiator uh, anymore. So the experience that you offer, obviously through your product, but also the experience outside of the product ends up being your differentiator. Um, and, and by meeting with the customers, understanding them, you can really kind of hone in on exactly how is this relationship going to set me apart from everybody else? That is, that is fantastic advice, Chris. I, I'm t this is the, the word empathy, you know, there's it's just, it's just being kicked around a lot as, as sort of maybe a little soft, you know, kind of squishy, and and really, there's no real way to sort of deploy that within the organization. Your advice right now is is very simple and and pointed. We do it ourselves. We should do it enough. Let me ask you a question. So, with that sage advice in in the can right now, um, I think people already got enough value out of this podcast. They can tune in, and go to implement. The yeah. rest of us, let's keep listening, right? Let's keep going because it's going to get more interesting. Um, but first, I want to ask, is Build New planning anything or has released anything to help um, help your customers sculpt customer experience for their customers? Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, a number of things, frankly. So um, if you think of what we do from a, from a building perspective, right, we obviously have our direct customers and then they have their customers, their residents. Uh, and so if you, we look at the chain of, you know, the, the business schools would call that we're in a B to B to C environment, right? Business to business to consumer. Correct. Yep. And so what we have done over the past couple of years is not forget about that C, you know, obviously our P our property management customers are extremely important to us and obviously part of the whole process. But what we have started to do is really work with them to enable and strengthen their relationships on their C side. And so a couple of things. One, um, we're in the midst of deploying an, a brand new full-on experience around our resident portal. So introducing technology into the unit uh, or via mobile uh, or via your desktop um, for the residents and how they can engage better and communicate directly with their property management firms. 
Um, and that includes texting, that includes real-time communications, that includes email, but then obviously also the ability to pay online, the ability to pick up other offers such as renter's insurance. And what we're trying to do is use technology to enhance the the day-to-day real-time or in life face-to-face type of relationship um, and we're getting we're getting some some great feedback on it and again it's because the experience is kind of um, it is frictionless the experience is modern the experience is new and frankly uh, segments like the Millennials and segments frankly even like the baby boomers are expecting this technology now to be coming into their units and that stuff really builds on the relationship that the, the PMC has because it shows the resident that the PMC understands their needs. Gotcha. So that the resident side, transparency is really sort of, it's really helpful to sort of have the experience. What about the other side of the C, Chris? You know, there's two C's, right, for them. One C is the resident, the other C is the landlord, right, the, the, yeah. the, 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 the rental owner. Are you guys doing anything on that side of things? Yeah, so within the platform, uh, we're, so we have uh, owner portals as well. So it's the same type of deal of the owners being able to communicate directly with the PMCs. Um, we're, and so the general, the general umbrella around uh, what you're calling the innovation, et cetera, for us is really focused on communications with, with the key constituents. So again, your resident, your owner, or your, even your vendors, because we have the vendor portal as well. It's another uh, constituent we have to remember and then mobile so how are we going to deal with um, you know tasks in other in, in um, things that you need either your owners to do or your vendors to do or frankly your residents to do via mobile and, and that whole engagement as well um, and then frankly it, it ends up being the innovation is the experience itself so we have done an enormous amount of uh, effort and put an enormous amount of investment over the past couple of years of making sure that Using Buildium is not something that actually adds friction to your day, but actually takes away friction and helps you get things done more quickly. So, and it really kind of boils down sometimes to, hey, where something took five clicks, if it now only takes two clicks, I've just saved somebody some time. And owners love that. Uh, Our PMCs love that. And obviously vendors and residents love that too, because their time is so crazy as well. I hope you're enjoying this show. We'll take you back there in just under 60 seconds. But first, are you running a property management company that is looking to grow by 100 properties or more over the next 12 months? Are you looking for a partner who can design and implement all of the marketing so you can focus on operations, customer experience, and profit? Are you willing to spend three to $600 per owner as you add them to your portfolio? And finally, do you have adequate resources on your end to dedicate to completing your part of the project so your marketing can be activated and all the leads start flowing in? Right? If the answers to those questions is yes, that means you are ready to grow and scale. And we here at Four and a Half want to help you to do so. Log into fourandhalf.com, hit free consultation, and set up a time with one of my team members to go through your business and figure out how four and a half can deliver the growth you're looking for. Now back to the show. So let's shift gears. Uh, one more, you know what, one more question. Um, John, John is here, um, our CEO. Yeah. He is, uh, he's sort of, uh, uh, he's off screen. I, we, we keep him off screen. It's just, it's just, the, it's just the thing we do. <laughs> but uh, so he, 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 he's sort of like, uh, brought up an interesting point silently, of course. Um, do you think going back to those VC backed startups and this, and this new sort of wave of property management, uh, te- technology first property management companies, you being, you know, running build, you knowing what it took to build that technology and how many years and, uh, and, and, and how much labor it took to build the technology pro, uh, system for, uh, for build you, how realistic do you think some of these VC backed companies who sort of, go in with a technology first flag how yeah. realistic do you think re, how i mean really can they put it with, with just a couple million bucks behind it can they really design a system that is that much better than say buildium or your competitors no for themselves okay <laughs> I, and, don't, and, I don't i don't, I don't to explore yeah, they can't <clears throat> um well they can but it's going to be more than two million dollars 
uh, you know, and it's going to take a large number of developers and it's going to take a large amount of time of really understanding uh, who they're servicing and who they're looking to help to be successful. Um, I think it depends on scale. You know, if they're, if they say, Hey, we're at, I don't know, 20, 30 units, uh, 100 units. Um, I think, I think they could come up with a nice little solution maybe, but it's not going to be a robust solution that can scale up to, you know, so I talked about the 16,000 customers, you know, we manage 1.8 million units. Right. That ends up being around 3 million plus people. Uh, you know, and so there's a scale here that uh, isn't just something that is going to take only, believe me, I, I see the expenses. Uh, yeah. It's not just a couple million dollars. <laughs> right. I feel you. I hear you. Okay. That's what I thought you well, said. Yeah, because you definitely feel me because I know you guys do the same thing, right? So, you know, I know you guys develop your, your solution too. So, yeah, it's, uh, I do have, um, yeah. You got it. Yeah. Well, yeah. we're super scrappy at it, but it, you know, I, I, I sort of, I have a s s like small idea compared to where you sit, small idea of what it takes to develop something like, you know, all right, it takes weeks and you know, a couple of guys and we got it done. Uh, but it's different scale, right? Different things. Yeah. So um, I just wanted to sort of get your opinion on this. Let's switch gears to growth. All mm -hmm. right, guys, if you were listening out there and you were like, hey, I don't care about these VC back companies. Good. Let's, we're talking about growth now for you. So stay tuned in. Um, Chris, this is the question I asked. I know the answer to, uh, but I've asked a lot of people and everybody has a different opinion. Yeah. I want to know your opinion from coming from a marketing company, coming, coming from customer service background. What is the percentage of revenue a healthy growth minded business should spend on marketing and sales? Come on, man. Give us, give us the secret. So I'll give you a number. Um, I'm also going to fly that number by or follow that number up with the idea of, of it depends. <laughs> sure. Um, you know, and the, and the it depends is this. So you can go to a uh, small business association. You can go to many other uh, of areas, sources of knowledge out there, and you can get a number. You know, um, SMB, the SBA will say 78% if you're less than $5 million. Um, you know, the, there's a, you then double that if you get to 10 to 50 million, it, you know, they believe, and then if, depending on what stage of the business you're in, as you can be at less than 5 million and still consider yourself, you know, a startup, um, then they say, well, depending on your model, you should, it shouldn't even be close to seven to eight. It should only be two to three because why spend money on marketing before you understand your business model and, and you just don't want to be, you know, throwing money out the window. So the, the percentage is actually really almost immaterial, to be honest with you. Sure. What you really need to figure out first is your model. Understand your business model, understand who you're going after, um, and then start to work and do some, you just talked about, I love the word, you talked about being scrappy. So you start, you start talking about being scrappy and figuring out, okay, what do I need first? Do I wanna grow my customer base? I only have 10 customers. Do I want to grow more customers or do I want to get more money out of those present customers? Um, because I have other offerings that I could, you know, increase their wallet. Well, that's a totally different type of marketing spend. And, you know, so getting customers is much more expensive. If you think you have the ability to get more customers or get more from your present customers, um, maybe you should try that. Uh, so then you get a, you know, frankly, the more spend you a customer has with you, uh, that's usually in proportion with how long they ultimately stay with you, right? So you then end up getting a long life, which then gives you more revenue, which then allows you to practice and try and test some things around new customer acquisition. So I know it sounds like I'm dodging it. I gave you the, the one number of seven to eight. Um, I'm, you know, here's the thing. After I left Constant Contact, a lot of people said, a lot of early SaaS, other SaaS companies, SaaS platforms, other companies that were going after SMB, they wanted, you know, they didn't want me to come in, other folks from the team to come in and say, tell us how you did it. I truly believe there's no template for success. And anybody that comes out and says, here's a template for success, you have to be, you have to be cautious of. Mm. Rather, what I would then say is, okay, can I spend at least two days in here understanding your business? Because the way that we did it at Constant Contact, the way that we're doing it at Buildium, um, you know, because we're accelerating growth, we, we're doing great things here, may not be right for your business. Um, 
And so I'm, I'm a little weary sometimes of that. It, you know, again, go to SBA, seven to eight for less than five, growth two to three. That's where I'll- That's a great uh, answer. That's a great answer. Uh, the, the answer is, let me boil it down for the ladies and gentlemen on the phone. Uh, excuse me. Um, you know, on, who's listening on the phone these days? <laughs> and iPads. And, and you're walking your dog. The wall uh, phone in the kitchen? <laughs> right. And so, so I, I think the advice is like, hey, uh, dial down, dial in your business model first. Yes. Also, have, I'll have something to say about this. But dial in your business model first, then see if uh, you can maximize revenue from existing customers yes. by bolting on what I call, I call these CBUs, complementary business units. It's a big word, but it's a simple concept. I can boil it down to acronym, CBU. And then, you know, you want to do ma you know, maintenance, you want to create data revenue center, you want to sell, help them sell and, and, and purchase real new invest additional investment properties, all those are huge opportunities around property management portfolio. Yes. Property management portfolio can be monetized in many ways. But yeah. if you are growing and you dialed in your business model and you closer to 5 million, or at least you consider yourself pretty well dialed in, 7 to 8%. Do I have it right? Yes. Okay, good, great. Next question, let's get deeper. Um, what are the traits, now you have a, a huge swath of property management companies that you guys, help with, work with, deal with every day, get feedback from. What are some of the key traits of a successful property management company that you sort of traced over time versus an average one? Yeah, and so it's a company that, uh, it's a great question. It's a company that also wants to frankly be all in, right? So I think sometimes property management is sometimes looked as uh, maybe a side business. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll start with that being, you know, you got to be all in. And again, I give the example of sometimes, you know, obviously a, a real estate organization who's buying and selling and has their brokerage side. And then sometimes the property management side is only looked at as, oh, this is the, this is the area that I'll get the regular income in, right? Um, you got to give property, I'll start off by saying, as a property management company, you have to give it its due and its respect and be dedicated to that as much as you are for other parts of the business. Because it's, it is, as we said, it's much more complex than it looks on, it, on, on its surface. Um, and so that's the first one. Um, I'm gonna go back to a couple of things that I said earlier, empathy driven, service oriented, and tech enabled, right? Mm -hmm. The time has come where, frankly, one of the things we'd love to have here is retire the big three ring binders once and for all. Get rid of all the papers. All, today's technology, regardless if it's Buildium or if it's any of our competitors, uh, allows you to do that if you fully, if you're committed to it, you can get rid of all the old stuff. Um, service oriented goes to relationships uh, and empathy for all of your constituents that we talked about. Uh, we talked about that before. You know, building on that, you hear how many doors do you manage? How many units do you manage? Like how empty of personality or feeling is that? You're not, man <laughs> you're not managing doors or units. You're actually managing homes. I don't care if somebody's buying something or renting something, everybody wants to find a home. And so those property managers that really buy into that idea that of where we are in the home business, primo, they're gonna be, they're going to get their left, right and center. Um, we talked about, you know, that idea of resident first approach. Um, that's not to say you don't care about your, your owners, you don't care about your vendors. Um, but frankly, if you can get a resident to stay longer, um, you know, you don't have to deal with the vacancy expense. You don't have to, frankly, deal with owners potentially, you know, changing things up on you. Um, you get a resident in and you keep that resident for multi years. You get them over the first lease renewal. The likelihood they're going to go to the second lease renewal goes up. Get them to a second, the likelihood to a third goes up even more. Um, and then, you know, keep, we talked about the, the experience. So there's the whole idea of greater amenities and being there, not only in the bad times, but being present in the, in the times when there's not um, the, not the pipes breaking, right? Doing, just being around and, and showing, um, showing your residents that you care. Uh, that for me is, are those folks that are going to have a really great chance of getting to that point in their business where we call them the autonomous businesses, right? So it's not the situation where every single day you're running around like, you know, crazy, but rather you are able as an autonomous business to focus on what matters to you most because you're running an efficient business through technology. You have strong uh, relationships. So it's not like the sky is falling with your residence vendors and, and owners all the time. 
you are in a level of kind of calmness uh, and driving your business to the success that you want to get to. Um, and a lot of times that's just freedom, be it, be it you know, uh, financial freedom, be that freedom to help your families out, et cetera. Um, so yeah, those are the, the five things that I would say. Chris, that's, so you just basically, John, what he did is he just, you just distilled the wisdom of three years of like freaking podcasting into the last two and a half minutes. You know it. So empathy driven, I can't stop talking about this. Tech You're enabled, not. service oriented, homes versus units. I mean, I, I didn't articulate it as well as you have. It took me three years and you know thousands of hours of episodes to get it down. <laughs> but I think at the end of the day, this is the ticket, ladies and gentlemen. This is the ticket. Uh, we got to humanize who we are. And in order to afford more FaceTime, more touches with your clients, double down on tech. Yep, that's exactly it. Simple enough. Man, that was, that was good stuff. Um, I don't know if we can top this. Let's do, let's do uh, one more. <laughs> One more question. Maybe it's a, it's a good point to add. Uh, John, do you have a question? Maybe. No, no, no. Just, Come on, where's John? I want to see John. Where's John? This enigma. If you want to speak, you got to speak into the mic. There you go, Alex. You tell him. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, well, the, the idea of homes versus units is so important. Uh, so, so many times people get tied up in technology to understand that that a property management company is a service business that's all about communication. Right. Uh, if you do have a, um, a, a complementary business unit that does maintenance, then you are, yes, doing it yourself. But in many cases, you're just taking information and getting someone to act on that information, and that's all about dealing with humans. And, and adding in technology can certainly speed that up. But if you take the humanity out of it, you're, you're just going to fail. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Fair yeah. enough. All right, so I actually wanted to ask a question about your acquisition. You know, this is big business stuff, right? I want to yeah. talk big business, like strategy, boom, how, how did it work? Like when you guys acquired all property management, it, yeah. was, it, was, it was surprising. Not really, but surprising. Not really, but surprising. Like I couldn't, I, I couldn't decide. <laughs> <laughs> how is it working out? Right, well, was it surprising because you didn't think it fit into what we were trying to do strat strategically? Kind of fit, but it kind of didn't, you know? It was just... Huh. It was well, what, I, what I would just say in that is just, to, you know, we've talked about efficiency we, well, we, and we've asked a couple things around growing, right? And, but how do you grow your portfolio um, and wanting to grow your portfolio? That, you know, growth and efficiency ends up being the top two things that we get every single year when we do our annual state of the property management um, uh, vertical uh, in business, right? And so, so the growth aspect is what APM helped us do. Uh, and, and helps us continue to do, uh, to be able to have that marketplace for our customers uh, who are able to find property owners within their locales or even um, wider than their locales who are looking for property management firms. And uh, it's been great. Um, you know, we, we are providing literally thousands of leads um, every year to, to our customers who are growth-minded, growth-oriented, um, and rather than, you know, this is another channel. Now it's not there. It can't be their only channel for finding new leads and stuff, but uh, Lately, I'm still around. <laughs> and we, love you, we love you being around. Uh, but you know, it, it is, it's, it's a differentiator for ours. Uh, it's one that for sure. uh, we like to continue to uh, be able to offer and our customers of frankly, all sizes, um, you know, because you can get single family leads, multifamily leads, uh, so many, smaller association leads and actually very large association leads. So it's, it's pretty good. But do you, are you, so, so in, in a very short sort of a, a over, overall, what yeah. would you give the integration of that company into building? Like, be honest with me. Like at what, like, are you 80% at target on this as far as like everything, like talk, not just revenue, but the fit, everything else, are you hundred percent, you're 60, you're still dialing it in. I mean, it's been yeah. two years, so it's not been a long time. It has been two years. Yeah. So I would say, you know, we still have a great opportunity from a technology perspective to integrate them more, but from an integration into the model integration into, you know, the people, uh, the teams and, you know, all of that, um, that has definitely happened in spades and we're very happy with that. Um, you know, it's far away. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that sometimes is a little tough, uh, especially now because to get there, you have to go over the mountains and there's a lot of snow up there, but, uh, you know, um, but we're really happy with it. And I think, you know, it definitely is, is lived into that, that, uh, that um, hypothesis that if we offer a marketplace, um, our, our, our customers, and frankly, not even just our customers, we haven't, 
we have a huge number of non-customers, you know? So uh, we love the fact that we are able also to offer a marketplace to people that aren't even using Buildium, but yet are growth oriented and want to grow um, because at least they are exposed to how we think. Because even as part of APM, they'll be exposed to that human driven, you know, the relationship based, empathy driven, tech enabled type of messaging um, that, uh, that we put out there and that we truly believe in. Yeah. Gotcha. But we still have work to do on technology. It's, it's fair to point it out. No kidding. So is there, um, is there an appetite, appetite for a company like Buildium to close or associate with a company like Four and a Half? And the only reason I'm bringing out the podcast is a lot of our customers listen. Uh, we have mutual customers. I'm just curious, is it, because this, this, is, this is interesting because we are not a tech company, right? We're a technology-enabled yeah. service company. Um, right. And Buildium, like, like, but my perfect client, let me just sort of walk you through this. So my perfect client is somebody who we become a single throat to choke when it comes to growth. We're talking <laughs> website. <laughs> yeah, so if, that, if they're not growing, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's me. They don't have to call 16 other partners. What about a single bat to pat? Or that, right? So, so when it's successful. But usually, look, Chris, in this business, marketing business, you know, like, what have you done for me today? Yeah, 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 right? sure. Yep. Like yesterday, you've done uh, no back padding, right? Yesterday, you just earned your keep. Today, yet to yet to be determined. Right? <laughs> so anyway, ah, so my perfect line is yes. where we take full responsibility. For. <laughs> like we we have to own uh, responsibility for driving, you yep. know, traffic through the website, through search, you know, a content, reputation, all the elements, lead simple, conversion, sales yep. process. When we take care of that, that's my perfect line. Is there sort of on a building side, do you guys have clients who are sort of ripe for that kind of service and, and are looking for it or, or, not, or, or not really, or it's not something to touch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, most, so here's my take on that. So um, there is a huge aspect on the front end or the top of the funnel um, around uh, the opportunity to help our, our, our space, the property management space to really uh, improve their skills and improve their understanding of how to do what you're offering better. And I think what you offer helps them understand that pretty simply uh, and pretty straightforwardly of, hey, yeah, if you here's yet another channel to help you grow your business uh, and understand how these different channels and these different marketing activities and then the follow up and the engagement afterwards, why that is so important to this business, frankly. Why and why is that? Because it's a relationship, <laughs> you know? Right. So, um, so 100%, look, because they're time starved, because, you know, they're so focused on, on what they're doing in, in, in their business, the, the ability for property management firms and all the great people that work in it to, to you know, spend the time that's needed uh, to continue to understand what's happening, the latest thing. And like you said, what, what happened yesterday is, you know, we need to figure out what's going to happen today. If all of us in this community that service property management can continue just to understand what do we need to do to help lift this community up um, through technology or through best practices or through skill attainment, um, that's all good for all of us, right? And so I think you, four and a half, I think you, Jordan, they, you guys offer some uh, together separately differently offer some some great services that any property management firm should uh, I think take advantage of gotcha yeah sounds good man this was this was great I appreciate this uh, uh, you taking the time for this interview any parting words of wisdom um, for the listeners uh, yeah so there it's actually one it's a um, it's a quote from one of our customers that I, I love. Uh, I love the quote and I, I think this customer is great. Um, and it goes to this idea of growth versus efficiency. And it says, if you go after growth, I'm gonna paraphrase this because I'll probably get his exact words wrong. But <laughs> if you go after growth before you are on the efficiency journey, you're gonna lose. So I understand the, the kind of reaction and the desire all the time for people to say, I want to grow, I want to grow, I want to grow. Make sure, as we talked about, you understand your model, 
you're as efficient as possible in your model before you introduce growth to your model because if you don't, you're just gonna be inefficient. That is fantastic. That's a great place to end. Chris Lister here for everybody. Uh, uncovering and, uh, you know, sawing a lot of golden nuggets and, <laughs> and, and just throwing them out for, uh, for, for, um, for people to take advantage of. So good stuff, Chris. It's been a pleasure. Um, Alex, as always, thank you very much. Th thank you, and uh, see you guys all in a couple of weeks. You know it. <laughs>